Cycling in the Netherlands was an eye-opening experience that made us at the same time more hopeful and more pessimistic about the future of our cities back home in North America. Experiencing the obvious success of the Dutch cycling model in person made it all the more clear that bike-friendly cities are nice places to live, and that there's no big mystery about how to make urban cycling safe, convenient, and enjoyable. At the same time, it's hard not to feel disillusioned and frustrated by the fact that these straightforward solutions for better cities remain stubbornly controversial in North America. They've been held captive to a radical bike lobby. With even the most basic bike infrastructure getting caught up in culture wars and being treated as an existential threat to the rights and dignity of drivers. And we have downtown politicians ramming these bike lanes onto streets that don't make sense to the community. In this video, we're going to cover what impressed us most about infrastructure and cycling in the Netherlands on our recent two-week trip covering six cities. But before we get to the good parts, there were actually a few things that surprisingly didn't impress us about the Dutch cycling experience. The first is gas-powered mopeds or scooters, called snorfietsen in Dutch, which are allowed to use most bike lanes in the country, outside of central Amsterdam. They're very common and many sound and smell kind of like lawnmowers. Getting passed by one of these can take away from an otherwise blissful cycling experience. Back in Canada, we don't really have gas-powered vehicles and bike lanes. Another less than positive surprise was the Dutch public bike share system, which seemed less flexible and more expensive than other systems, including our beloved Bixie in Montreal. But that topic probably deserves its own dedicated video. This might also come as a surprise, but the dedicated bike lanes and pathways that we saw and used on our trip were very nice, but actually lower on the list of what impressed us most. They were on average wider and more likely to be separated from traffic than dedicated bike infrastructure back home. But the basic designs were actually pretty familiar from cities like Montreal and Vancouver. The Dutch have one-way cycle tracks, two-way cycle tracks, multi-use pathways in more suburban or rural areas. And yes, they even have painted bike lanes. The one design we encountered that feels the most novel from North America is having separate two-way bike paths on both sides of a larger arterial road, which makes it easy to bike in either direction without having to cross the road. There are lots of places back home where this would be great to have. But overall, the magic of the Dutch cycling experience is not that they have any super secret or unique bike path design. It's the rock-solid network where everything works together. Part of this feeling of a complete system is that protection for cyclists doesn't stop at intersections. The Dutch have a model for intersection design that keeps cyclists visible, separated, and predictable, no matter what direction they're going in. While most major cities in North America have at least a few examples of good separated bike lanes or pathways, Dutch-style protected intersections are pretty rare, and most cyclists over here have probably never seen one. Our old city of Ottawa is one of the few places actually building these, and watching them in action in the Netherlands gave us a new appreciation for Ottawa's efforts. With a little practice, these intersections feel natural and intuitive, and going back to a city without them feels like a major omission. A surprising amount of the Dutch bike network isn't actually dedicated lanes or pathways, but shared streets like the Fietstraat or Bicycle Street model, a smaller road intended for bikes that cars are allowed to use as guests, meaning that they drive slowly and don't necessarily expect to pass. Bollards and other traffic filters limit cars from using these as through routes, so you're probably only driving here if your destination is nearby. These were very comfortable rides, specifically because the idea of cars as guests wasn't just a sign on the road. It was numerical reality, with cyclists actually outnumbering cars to a pretty wide degree. We actually have some similar bicycle streets in North America, too, and they can work well, but they usually don't feel as coherent or intentional. We used to live near Echo Drive in Ottawa, which had a really good system of traffic barriers. Anyone, from kids to seniors, could comfortably bike or even walk on the street because cars were so infrequent and slow. But it was also more of an ad hoc arrangement that you knew about if you lived nearby, as opposed to an intentional and visible part of a bigger bike network. One reason bicycle streets in the Netherlands feel integrated into a bigger system is that they use the same red coloring as bike lanes, which sends a signal that this space is for bikes. The use of red pavement or road tiling in the Netherlands was actually less consistent than we expected. Red isn't used on all bike lanes, and it's also used on some sidewalks, medians, parking spaces, and first-class seats on the train. 
but overall the color coding does a pretty good job of identifying roots and setting expectations. And the fact that they bother to go the extra mile here shows just how seriously they take cycling in this country. The volume of cyclists that we saw in the Netherlands was impressive, especially in Utrecht. But we've seen big crowds on main bike routes in Montreal or Vancouver before, too, so that wasn't entirely novel to us. What did really stand out as unique, though, was the number of children and teenagers riding bikes, especially together without their parents. It's really cool to happen across a school at the right time and find a long string of students arriving by bike, or to bike through a suburb and see groups of kids and teenagers just biking around together. This used to be more common in North America, but we've seen a really sharp decline in children cycling over the past few decades, as our roads have filled up with bigger, faster, and heavier traffic. You can still find full bike racks in front of many schools in Montreal, but cycling isn't the overwhelming choice like it seems to be in the Netherlands. Another major difference in volume compared to back home was bike parking, which is on a whole other level in the Netherlands, sometimes literally so, and especially at train stations. With that said, in cities outside the Netherlands with regular bike share systems, bike parking is also handled through these bike share stations that are dotted around everywhere that don't really seem to have an equivalent in the Netherlands. Finally, the ultimate success of the Dutch cycling experience, the thing that every aspiring bike-friendly city really needs to dedicate itself to, is the coverage, reach, and consistency of the bike network. Cycling in the Netherlands was an absolute breath of fresh air because bike infrastructure goes everywhere. Basically every single arterial road had an adjacent bike lane or pathway, and basically every neighborhood had safe local streets through it. It's not just a quote-unquote downtown thing either. The bike network goes to residential suburbs, the beach, the airport, metal fabrication factories, highways, small towns, fields full of goats, everywhere. We did a day trip from The Hague to Rotterdam through Delft one day, and it was absolutely freeing knowing that we didn't have to follow any exact route. We could just generally know the direction we had to go in and make our way there. This isn't to say that the quality of the bike infrastructure was perfectly consistent in the country. Some countryside routes weren't quite as nice, and biking in central Amsterdam was worse than the suburbs or smaller cities. There were even a few areas where bike lanes disappeared, reminding us of home. But the consistency and experience didn't vary nearly as wildly as it does back home. We've done lots of bike trips in the Montreal region. Some routes are very nice but others are profoundly bad in a way that makes it very important to plan your trip and follow the right route, even if it means taking the long way to get where you're going. And even in the overall pretty bike-friendly neighborhoods of central Montreal, there are still many gaps and routes you just don't want to use if you value your safety and comfort. It's one thing to hear about Dutch cycling culture and infrastructure from Bicycle Dutch, Street Films, or The Bruntlets, but experiencing it in real life gave us a more nuanced and vivid understanding of what makes it work. Coming home to Montreal, we are more thankful than ever to have what is honestly a pretty good cycling experience where we live, but we also see more clearly just how limited our city's bike network is, with pretty good coverage in central neighborhoods, but falling apart pretty quickly outside of that. 